I was so excited for this conversation. Matt, you and I have known each other for not a super long amount of time. I want to say maybe six or eight months. Time is a little blurry right now. But every time we talk, I really enjoy getting to know you. I really enjoy getting to know more about what motivates you, why you love customer success, what you love about adaption. And I thought if we ever create any sort of interview series, you are someone that I would love to interview. So here we are. <laughs> We're here. It's happening. We're here. Yeah. <laughs> it's happening. Um, and this is our, just for everyone who's watching or listening, this is the third fireside chat or humans of CS episode that we are filming um, or recording. And so it's still new and really, really exciting. I hope it will forever be, but we are learning the ropes. So Matt was amazing to say, sign me in, like sign me up coach, like put me in. I want to do this. And it's been, it's been amazing, an amazing opportunity. So thank you so much. Well, of course. And I have to say thank you because you do wonderful things for the CS community and actually make it well known, which is, um, cause not everybody knows what customer success is. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, we haven't known each other that long, but when we met, it was like, you know, oh, we're customer success spirits together. You know, it's like, it was an instant connection. So, um, yeah, couldn't be happier to be here. And thanks so much for bringing me along. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I was just thinking about our, that coffee that we had, um, at Tate on summer street, I think in, when we street. could have coffee together, which. You know, it's been it's been a long time now. I'm sorry that we have to do it's this over Zoom. All good. Yeah, yeah. So um, a few things that we're going to talk about today over the hour that we have. I want to ask you a little bit about yourself. Being a human being in customer success, it is so much about the personal connections that we make with each other, that we make with our team members, and of course our customers. So I want to learn more about you. I want to learn more about your role and what you do at Adaption, what you love about Adaption, and uh, you know everything in between. So um, I'm really excited to uh, build on our friendship, I know, because it's still new. And uh, thank you so much to putting, just so everyone knows, Matt put a ton of work. I sent him show notes. And he went through a, like and answered every question and I loved it. And I, I didn't want to read it before we jumped into talk because I was like, I don't want to know too much. <laughs> but um, I know. And I, I sent it being like, I just want you to know that I'm, I'm taking this seriously. You know? so, <laughs> I appreciated yeah. it. But we'll, we'll just roll on it. it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about you. Um, you know, before we dive into your nine to five, uh, let's talk about your life outside of adoption. Um, you know, what are some of the hobbies that you have? I know you have a family. You're getting to spend a lot of time with them right now. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> talk to me a little bit about what, you know, who you are as a human being outside of work. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, uh, yep, uh, happily married and a uh, father of two great girls who are five and three um, and my Wife is amazing. She's a um, super successful businesswoman herself and um, just an awesome mom. And um, so, yeah, we live um, in the city and in Boston. And um, we don't do anything crazy exciting, but we like to just be outdoors a lot. Um, this Nowadays, we're doing a lot, of, a lot of family walks, a lot of scooter and bike rides. And uh, we have a dog as well. So we take our, our loyal dog, Watson, around. Mm -hmm. um, Castle Island here in South Boston. But um, yeah, I guess uh, family's a really big part of my life, um, always has been. I come from a big family, my wife comes from a big family. So weekends, you usually see us with them. Now that we're shifting into summer, we'll um, carve out some time to do some vacations down the Cape. Oh, and nice. I really think like our Cape days kind of epitomize like me. So it's like, you wake up early, have a cup of coffee, get the kids settled, sneak out for a run. You know, yes. go, go along the water and then get home, make sandwiches and go to the beach for the full day and just get, we have, um, we go with like my full family. So it's my brother and his kids, my sister and her kids. And there's just nine grandchildren like out in the ocean. And that's, um, yeah, then we go home, clean up, have a beer, throw stuff on the grill. It's, that's, um, that's kind of my happy place. So I'd say that's, that's who I am uh, kind of outside of, outside of the, the job. 
That sounds like a dream day that you just described. <laughs> Can we be doing that right now and also filming this interview? <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like, fingers crossed we can do that this summer, so. Oh, uh, I hope so. I, I want to say yes, it's it's going to happen. Um, stay yeah, positive. that sounds, stay positive, exactly. <laughs> that sounds amazing. So, you know, knowing that you really value spending a lot of time with your family in these beautiful days uh, along the cave, hanging out with the extended family, um how how as the, has that experience that you've had or some of the goals um that you have as a person outside of your work um how does that translate into your day-to-day -day work at adeption how are you bringing your personal experiences into your daily work yeah that's a great um question it's not really one i think um a ton i don't think i i thought a lot about that um, until fairly recently, and it, it might be just part of the work that we do at Adeption, but um, kind of like bringing your whole self to work and being able to be your authentic self is, um, is actually a huge part of customer success. Um, and so um, allowing myself to kind of share that, you know, um, five to nine self, that out, out, outside of work time, um, share that part of me with my customers is one of the ways that I, I build relationships um, and start to build up some trust um, with our clients. And so, uh, yeah, I think, I actually think that's a, a huge part of what I do is, is be able to make that connection. And if I can't bring some of that um, to my role, um, then, then I think, you know, it's not going to be as fulfilling. Um, it, and, and just kind of quickly, the other side of it is, um, um, I think I, I care a lot, right? I care a lot about my family and I kind of, um, those qualities, those things that, um, kind of come a bit naturally for me is, is the same type of care that I bring over into, into our role, making sure our customers are taken care of and, um, are getting the most out of their, their experience on our platform. Mm, yeah. I, I love that idea of being a caretaker for our customers and just for everyone that might be listening today, can you talk a little bit about the typical customer that you are working with at Adeption? Um, I know some of us might be working with SMBs versus a mid-market versus enterprise. So maybe you can share a little bit about where Adeption is in their company journey and the type of customer you're working with today. Yeah, yeah, sure. So we work primarily with large enterprise clients, but it could also be um, kind of sm smaller and medium-sized businesses as well. Um, but we are in the, um, the leadership development space. So when I think of my customer, I kind of have two. Um, one is the, is the buyer who I'm building and maintaining that relationship with. And they're typically in the HR space. So, um, you know, they could have the role of learning and development. Um, some larger organizations actually have leadership development carved out mm. um, as a title. Um, so, but they fall into that HR bucket typically, um, mm. kind of rolling up to the head of people. The other customer though is the, the actual user of the platform. So, um, you know, HR may, may buy, uh, may, may be owning a program, for example, like a leadership development program, but the people that go through it are the leaders within the organization. And so those are the people on our platform uh, the most. Um, and so I have an obligation to make sure that they're having a delightful experience and actually getting something out of it as well. Um, so uh, I, I see it as kind of like a dual, uh, dual customer. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It can be difficult to work with so many key stakeholders um, or key personas or humans that you want to make sure you keep happy. I think the exciting part of it is that each one of them likely has their own goals and values and things that they want to achieve through the platform. So it can be really fun to help them make sure that they're achieving those goals and to see who the different people or, or what they're focused on, depending on their role, um, makes part of what is, you know, customer makes customer success so exciting is the fact that you do deal with so many different types of people and you have to learn how to navigate those relationships. Um, and how to make sure that they're all getting the value they're looking to get out of the platform and out of your relationship, frankly. Absolutely. Yeah. I think of it as 
we say this a lot internally at, at Adeption is, you know, it's not a one size fits all. It's a one size fits one. And you really need to, oh. to understand and listen, you know, to, to get to that point. A one size fits one. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to take notes on that. That's <laughs> a really it. good you one. You can steal that one. I want to steal that one. A one size fits one. I absolutely love that. So for those of us that are working with in other high touch businesses, um, or I should maybe say we have really strong relationships with our customers. Um, you know, it can, when you're just starting out, it can sometimes feel like you want to focus so much on scale, you know, like the, the one size fits one. You're like, how is that going to scale when we are a much, much larger organization? Um, but I do think that sometimes we maybe focus on scaling a little bit too early. And, and when you're working with those first, second, third, fourth, fifth cohorts of customers, it is so important to intricately understand what they need and what they want, because that will inform your customer life cycles, the journey that they go through, how you market and sell. I mean, you're just, we're in hyperdrive mode when it comes to, to learning. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to, to know uh, about how, how long has adoption um, been in business for now? I know you've been there for about two years. How long were they on their journey before you joined? Yeah, it's a good, good, uh, it's, it's kind of a tough one to, to nail down. Um, kind of like the evolution of a software, like, as yeah. you well know, it's like, well, we had like a beta, but you yeah, know, totally. um, wasn't really <laughs> ready for prime time. Um, so we've been in the U S for about four years. Um, with kind of like a beta product um, born out of New Zealand, actually, where our founder's from, for about maybe a year and a half leading up to that. Um, but uh, you could take us all the way back to um, about nine years ago is where kind of adoption started, um, which is when I met the founder, um, Carl, uh, at business school at Babson, just outside of Boston here. And um, he's this, yeah, Kiwi who had this leadership <laughs> development development business back in his home where they did in-person workshops and things like that. And um, yeah, he came to this entrepreneurship class and pitched an idea on how to scale his business. And, um, we all had to pitch ideas um, <laughs> on what we were going to work on for this semester and only a few ideas would get picked. And if you, your idea didn't get, didn't get picked, you had to join one of the teams. Um, I had picked a, I had pitched a dating website. So <laughs> Yes, I remember you talking about this. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Which was, those were cool back in like 2011, all right? You know? 100%. Um, yeah. Um, and, uh, but anyways, my idea did not get pecked and his did, but he, he recruited me to join his team. And we worked on all semester what, what is now adoption. It was how do we scale this business and leverage technology. And, wow. Um, yeah, we ended up launching it with one of his clients at the end of the semester, which was a crazy experience. That's um, crazy. Because I was working at an insurance company um, full time, going to school at night. And then he was like, if you're willing to stick around, I'll, I'm going to do this thing, but I'm going to need your help. And so I was like, this is the coolest thing I'm working on right now. And <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So I'm um, sorry, I totally took us down a, a different path, but that's kind of like how Adeption got started. And even though I've only been there for two, two and a half years, um, I've been around it since the start. Mm. Um, it's just, you know, when, when we graduated, Carl went back to New Zealand, was taking the money from the, um, the, the leadership development company, using mm. that to fund the profits or fund the, the, the build of the software. I went back to my safe corporate job, um, but we stayed in touch. And as that software became like was built and we were doing betas, I was introducing him to people here in the States, um, kind of just playing like a matchmaking role that evolved into more of a sales role, going to conferences with them. And then finally we got some customers and I started playing customer success role and wow. at kind of moonlighting doing it. And after about four months of that, I was like, dude, let's make it happen. Like I'm in, I'm a hundred, if you're in, I'm in, if you'll have me, you know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So yeah. knowing that you moved from sales, you know, you had, you had this dream, you worked on this thesis and this opportunity together. It sounds like you guys have a really good working relationship. You had the, you know, the experience at Babson and then you 
you know, some time passes, you send some referrals along, then you join in a sales role and then you move to customer success. What was the moment, um, or maybe not the moment, I probably should, I could better phrase this question, but at what point did you think, you know what, I might be good at sales and I like that, but I think I prefer to work with our customers after the sale has happened. And when, how did you sort of think through that experience? And at what point did you decide, I want to, I think I want to lead customer success efforts. And I think this is what that means. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if there was a moment, right. But there was, there's certainly an evolution and there was, I remember thinking, oh, I want to do this sales thing because this is fun. We're going to conferences and like, we didn't get one sale from that, those conferences. You know? <laughs> so like either those aren't a good place to get a sale or maybe it just, it wasn't for me. Um, and I've, I've always thought I had a good personality for sales. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, but when it came time, like I also have a conservative, conservative side to me. And so there was, you know, this thought of, well, we could pay you a little bit or we could pay you not a lot and, um, and have a commission based on your sales. I was just like, I don't know if I can mm. feel like really good about that I'd rather be able to just focus in on my work and not have like a lot of stress around it mm. um, so that was that's kind of like my personal feeling but then it really came down to whatever the business needed um, I just I do have a great relationship with Carl I see him as a friend a mentor um, our CEO uh, who's just done amazing things and um, that's what he needed, you know? And I was like, I'm there, I'll do it, let's do this. Um, and so um, the beauty of, of my role now is that I get to do a little bit of sales still, um, because whether that's expanding current relationships or we've got a new prospect coming in, I mean, I'll jump on and do a demo for them. You know what I mean? It's like, and I can do it with, with um, without this kind of thing in the back of my head, like, oh, you, you need this in order to, hit a number or whatever. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. I think that's such an important distinction, you know, for th those that are out there that are wondering, number one, as I build a team, should we own a number? What does that number look like from a revenue perspective? And then for the individuals that are thinking, am, am I motivated by owning a number? You know, am I sort of gravitating towards a full sales role or more of a CS role, which sometimes that can be a hybrid of sales and services and then sometimes it really is success only it's they are they track towards a happiness score and there really is no revenue tied to the role but for the individual i think you mentioned two interesting things the first one is that if you aren't motivated by money necessarily then that might not be the best opportunity for you you know sales per people are usually highly motivated by earning, you know, their commissions. Um, if you are more motivated by, you know, deeply knowing other human beings and, and building those friendships and tracking towards success, um, then you might want to think of a customer success role. As you are building a team, you want to think about what, what are we responsible for? And depending on what those responsibilities are, I want to look towards people that are more relationship focused and less, you know, financially focused and, or maybe vice versa. And I know that's, maybe that's not a fair way to boil it down. Um, that's sort of how I have thought about it in, in the past. Yeah, yeah, and I would, I would agree that um, for people, if you're looking at customer success as maybe a potential place that you wanna uh, live and work and or you're exploring it, um, I would totally agree with you that you need to love people and yeah. I mean yeah. that is like at the end of the day what we're all about so if that's not your motivator if there are some other ones um, it may not be the right the right move for you but I do feel like that's got to be the like that's kind of a non-starter um, mm. you've got to be in the people uh, business and love it mm. um, from there uh, do you really just like you're saying like do you get a lot of value out of building those relationships and earning people's trust and then being able to do some like magical things together. Yeah. Um, where if they hit their goals, you hit your goals. Mm -hmm. So you should mm -hmm. be motivated by improving their experience. Um, so 
yeah, if those things excite you and you're like, yeah, I could do that. And I think I'd really enjoy that. Um, then, then I think, yeah, customer success is, is the way to go. At least that's you. what it was. Yeah. Right. That's the way it was for, for me, for sure. That's cool. Um, we're definitely simpatico in that sense. So talking about the importance of building human relationships, a lot of people assume that individuals and customer success are all extroverted and many of us are, but many of us aren't. So do you consider yourself an extrovert or an introvert? I am most certainly an extrovert. <laughs> um, there's like no, no ifs, ands, or buts. I certainly love my alone time too. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, I didn't mention this as my hobbies, but, um, you know, I do love crossword puzzles. And so like, I'll, I'll like to like go on the deck with a cup of coffee and a crossword puzzle and I'm happy as a clam. But, um, the things that, that kind of give me uh, a lot of, uh, energy, I derive a lot of value from are interacting with people, whether that be with our customers, my teammates, um, or yeah, collaborating with, with other partners to, you know, solve really, really kind of challenging challenging problems mm -hmm. so. that's cool yeah i have recently gotten into crossword puzzles as well i am not good at them at all but i enjoy asking my family to help <laughs> and when i do get one correct i'm just thinking i'm the smartest person in the world which is obviously not the case it's such a nice little boost of like dopamine or whatever, you know, whatever the neuroscience is behind it. But, um, you know, my, it's funny. It's like a, for whatever reason, it's a, my dad and my brother are the same. My mom and my sister don't really care for them, but, um, yeah, there's, there is a, a little bit of happiness when my dad says, you know, give me a four, you know, four letter word for or whatever. Right. You know, um, uh, it's, 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 a uh, one of my little pleasures in, in life. Yeah. Can we please put a link to your favorite crossword puzzle um, resources in the show notes? I'm sure that we have some other people out there that would love that. <laughs> I'd be happy to, I'd be happy okay. to, yeah. Uh, well, you mentioned dopamine earlier, so I'm curious to know um, what aspects of your, of your work you love the most. And you talked about obviously connecting with human beings, helping them achieve their goals. I'm sure that's part of it. Um, what do you love about it? What maybe frustrates you about it? Yeah, great question. So, so um, I think helping them reach their goals is certainly the thing that I love about it. And um, yeah, like I said, when those are in line with mine, we're all, you know, we're all working towards the, towards the same thing. Um, the, the challenge for me right now, which I, is something that I love too, is well, how do we scale this thing? Um, kind of you asked earlier where adoption is in its life cycle and things we need to be careful of as we try to grow too quickly. We are certainly at like an inflection point where, mm. um, where we're starting to pick up some new customers, current clients are thankfully expanding. And so I'm looking at it like, all right, it's like time to grow the team a little bit. And, but wait, how do I put down into a process kind of what it is that I do um, mm. because I think for us there's 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 an art to to the relationship and um, so what I'm trying to do is not not make it science um, but at least uncover what are some of those rules of thumb or those heuristics that we can we can put down on paper that say this generally works really well for our, our clients, regardless of size, industry, um, what have you. Um, and so that I can take that and share that with um, the other person on my team and then any of our future teammates um, to say, listen, I want you to be you, be your authentic mm -hmm. self, build your own relationships and trust with the customer. However, I'm going to give you some scaffolding too, so that, you know, it's like bumper bowling, you know, <laughs> you roll it down and if you, you hit the side, it's cool. We got you, you know, but, um, but yeah, in between it's all, it's all you like, do your, do you. So, uh, that's the thing that I'm trying to crack right now. And literally like, this is it. This is like, I, love I have, it. <laughs> I have a flow. I have, you know, is it hard or easy for our customer along the way? Um, I'm literally working on it now. Yeah. And it's, 
um, I've mapped our customer journey before and all that, but it's, 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 it's a different lens and, um, it's exciting and super frustrating at the same time. Of course. Of course. I think to our customer journeys or experiences are always changing. So the moment you put them on paper, you're continuously optimizing. We are much like marketers in the way that we are always testing out certain parts of the life cycle that maybe make it into the happy path, as we sometimes call it. You talked about those inflection points that really should be happening no matter the size or the type of the customer. Um, and then deciding maybe, you know, does it make it into the happy path? Do we get rid of it? But it's so fun to be a mad scientist testing out all these opportunities to see what sticks and what works and then to operationalize a team around it. Absolutely. Sounds like, yeah, it sounds like you're really enjoying yourself, which I, we're all meant to have fun. <laughs> I am. And, 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 you know, I'll be honest too, this, the, the past two weeks have probably been like two of the busiest weeks that I've ever had. And I certainly had moments of like, oh my gosh, like I can't keep up. Um, but one of my teammates was like, who, who leads our sales efforts was like, just said it sent a, a, we, a WhatsApp note. So because we're, we have teammates in India and in New Zealand, and then here in the States, we use WhatsApp, but um, he sent it out and he's just like, everyone just like hang in there like we are at a moment like that we're gonna look back on and be like that was awesome you know mm, so mm. I was like little boosts like that I was like okay I can do this I can hang on but um yeah I wouldn't I really wouldn't have it any other way no. yeah yeah can we I feel like this is maybe a nice place for us to talk a little bit about burnout um because you know we're all wondering how do we ensure that we keep the energy high um, I've described it as feeling like we're in slow motion and hyperdrive at the same time, and there's just a lot going on. So um, you talked earlier about some of the things you do. You spend time with family. You have your amazing opportunities to you know, be on the Cape on the weekends, hopefully very soon. You do your crossword puzzles. Um, what are you doing as a team, or what are you thinking about doing for your team to help ensure or mitigate burnout, knowing that there is just so much to be done? Yeah, it's, it's, um, I feel like it's a never ending, um, battle or I don't even want to call it a battle. It's just a challenge. It's something you're going to constantly have to manage because things are always going to come up. Um, so I kind of talk about what we do, um, as a team, but also talk about my personal side of things. So, um, as a team, we meet, um, because we're spread out all over the globe and we, we've been remote we've never had an office, so we've been remote always, um, with maybe a few exceptions, but, um, we check in on WhatsApp every day. People send, what are you, just, what are you working on today? Um, and so that's, that's one thing. We have a weekly call on Monday nights in Boston time, um, just to, for a half hour, just to connect as a team. You may share a little bit about work, but it's really like the human connection. Mm. Um, and just those little things can, can go a long way in terms of perspective, um, just being able to talk, um, yeah. things like, like that. So there's, there's something about making sure that we're still connecting, um, especially in a virtual, virtual world. Um, the other thing, and this is something I'm not necessarily great about, but I'm working on it, is um, doing like things together. So you know, if you had your top three priorities, you'd have, you know, uh, for me, it'd be, it'd be work, it'd be family and friends. Um, mm. And uh, too often, I think we think of those things as, as separate. And how can we find moments in a busy, busy time where you may be able to satisfy maybe not all three, but two out of three with one activity that's joint. Um, so I like to do my crossword puzzles, but I also like to spend time with my family. Maybe I do a puzzle with my daughter, you know, who just got a new one for her birthday. It's a frozen one. It's sweet. Um, so, this is so um, powerful. I, I am really vibing on this. I feel like this is, this is going to be a life-changing thought. So please continue. That's why I'm not interrupting. Please, please. <laughs> no, no, no. It's awesome because, and I, and I steal this too from, from Carl, from our, um, our CEO, uh, he loves to fish and so, but his kids are getting to the age of eight and six. And so he's like, thankfully, 
one or two of them love to come with me now. And it's his way of kind of recharging, getting some, some more energy. Um, whereas like he totally could have booked a bunch of calls during that time, you know? Mm. Um, so I think it's, it's a matter of, um, of finding some of those synergies or, or things you can do, like kill two birds with one stone. Um, and then I think the last piece, which I'm really not good at and I'm working on is just saying no. Um, you know, if it, if it doesn't fall into those priorities, um, can you find a way to say no or not now? Um, and like I said, I'm bad at that. I try to make everybody super happy and like, please everybody. Um, but, um, I am starting to, I have a huge to-do list. I'm starting to, to work on what a to-don't list would be. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I forget where I read that. I think it was in, it was one of the either... Daniel Pink's drive or um, I don't know, Jonah Lair's uh, book on how we decide. I think it was something like that. Um, whereas like, yeah, sometimes we, we focus too much on all the things we need to do. What about, are there, is there a bucket of things we should avoid? You know? Wow. Um, we'll definitely have to link those in the show notes too. Yeah, um, the to don't yeah. list. That's awesome. How do you, just speaking tactically, cause I'm super curious. Um, I love the idea of a to don't list. I never thought about that. Um, I'm sure it must be kind of freeing to decide no. I'm writing it down and I'm saying, and I'm crossing it off and saying no, right? Um, now, when it comes to your to do list, knowing that there are so many things to be done, how do you manage productivity on a daily basis? And I'm, I'm really curious tactically how you're doing this. Are you blocking off time in your calendar? Are you, do you have sort of, you know, just an app that you use that you go down and you cross things off? How, how are you most productive? Yeah, that's, um, I think it's an ongoing like dance, you know, <laughs> um, uh, because certainly there are times like even creating my, my journey map and, and, and focusing on how do we onboard customers and things like that. I've had that, I've blocked time on my calendar and it keeps getting like bumped and bumped and bumped. So um, that's not always like a foolproof way for me to, to do it. So that's just, just me personally. Um, what I try to do is I have my super long to-do list and I try to chunk out the top priorities for the day okay. and just really focus in on those. Um, my time with my customers is already blocked. You know, I meet with them weekly, some of them it's bi-weekly, but most are weekly. And so I try to add that to the like agenda of, um, you know, if it's not something, if it's not totally on me, if it's something we can discuss um, or work on together, I try to, to, to let those things be where they are to free up some time for others. But um, yeah, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily like the all-star at it, you know? <laughs> Uh, well, I think one of the things I love about you, and you have this on your LinkedIn profile, um, you have, I wrote it down because I love it, the be conscious, uh, be uh, curious, be better. And that what you're, you're there at adoption because what you're working on is worth every little bit of that effort. So I really find that admirable. Um, and it sounds like, you know, through everything that you've mentioned today, it's been so focused on being aware of what you're doing and what you want to improve. And, and then being curious about improving it and then sort of carrying out on that curiosity. So, um, and I, I, you know, your productivity hack around not letting things be silos. You mentioned friends, family, and work, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of thinking about how you can bring them together is pretty genius. And <laughs> how am I almost 40 years old and I haven't even thought about that yet? <laughs> we should talk more we're, often. We're, we're, I was going to say, we're the same age and... Uh... I, I, I totally stole it, but you know, I like to steal, I steal with pride, you know, I'm not, totally. I'm not ashamed to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I was talking with a friend the other day and he said, um, he's the head of customer success at a co company called Board. And he said, every day is a school day. And I loved that too. I love it. Um, that's and awesome. that's why I show up. I'm motivated by learning or else, you know, I, I don't think I would have get any joy out of it. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, not to, well, yeah, I'm going to like shamelessly plug um, adoption, but the be conscious, be curious, be better is, is, is our tagline. And it's, it's mm. how we take, how we work with leaders. And so um, we look at it as um, 
and, and there's good studies to back it, but um, leadership's a, a, an action, you know, it's, it's, a, um, it's not something that you get out of a YouTube video or a masterclass or even one of the books that I just quoted that I think was so great. Um, nothing changes until you actually do something about it. So we liken it to uh, going, uh, getting fit, like going to the gym or learning a new instrument or working on crossword puzzles for, you know, mm -hmm. as a new hobby. Um, you're not going to get better until you start to, to try it out. Um, you can listen to all the experts in the world, but it's all about you. And so we try to take folks through that that path of being conscious, be very deliberate about like, what is it like that you're currently experiencing? Are you good at it? Um, what do you already know? There's usually a lot of things that we already know that we're just not doing. Totally. Um, and then be curious, explore what others are saying. Um, mm -hmm. And then what, what do the experts say? But um, we'll use AI to curate that so that it's unique to you. Um, mm -hmm. So that it's a one size fits one experience. Um, um, but all of that is done in order to get you to say like, all right, this is, this is what I'm going to do in the next two weeks to try to get better, to get, to move closer towards my goal. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then we, we have people come back and share what they did and reflect on how did it went, how it went. And then you go through the cycle again. So, um, yeah, so you showing up to work like every day is a school day and trying to learn something new and, and be better by being an active participant in that. That's that's magic. That's how it's going to yeah. go. It, yeah, I, I love it. It is, it is magic. Um, so you mentioned the, your, the philosophy behind adaption and what you guys are really working towards. Um, what is your team working towards accomplishing in the second half of 2020? You know, this year is already almost half finished or half over, which is just insane. Um, have you begun 2021 planning? Uh, you know, what are you thinking about the rest of 2020? Love to hear any of your thoughts around how you're uh, deciding where you're going to spend your conscious time for the end of this year. Yeah, yeah, I like that, the conscious time. I'm going to steal that one. Um, <laughs> so right or, right or wrong, I'm still very much focused on 2020. And, um, and there are a couple things. And <laughs> I mentioned to you this before. There is construction going on directly outside my building. So this is Boston, um, guys. <laughs> this is city living. So if you hear a lot of beeping and jackhammers and things, I apologize. But um, I try to like speak up over it. Uh, anyways, uh, 2020. Um, so expanding with current clients is still like the the, the main goal for customer success. Um, we we've and it goes back to that the what you were saying about like being careful about, about growth and things. We've been with most of our clients for about two years, for some coming up on three. And um, uh, some were, you know, we were, were a small, we are a small company, but even then we were even smaller. And so they were taking kind of like a baby step pilot with us. And then we did a little bit more and then a little bit more. And now we're at a point, which I'm really proud to say is like, some are really ready to, to try to grow and they've introduced us to other people wow. in their company. And um, so that is still the, the goal. It's like, all right, this, we're not over the finish line there yet. Let's keep, let's keep working. So mm -hmm. number one is expand. Number two is nail down those heuristics, those rules of thumb. Um, mm -hmm. Cause I feel like I need to get my house in order before I get to my third goal, which is grow the team. Yeah. Um, Cause I don't want to yeah. bring people in and then be like, what is it that you want me to do here? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I I love that, and I I used to, I used to sort of, I don't know, chafe at the idea of so much prep or even a little bit of prep. I have to be honest. Um, going into hiring when you are a young startup, early stage, um, and this was again ten years ago, Sansi thinking, and my thought was. If this is a sink or swim environment. It's been sink or swim for all of us. There are no rules. There is no playbook. You just need to come in and work alongside me. I work alongside you. Let's make some magic happen, as you say. And um, I realize now that the, I think the spirit of which I said that or thought that was not bad, but I, you really do. I was really taking for granted the fact that we have, you know, you've spent time in a business, you've amassed so much knowledge. 
if you aren't able to put that in some form that's easily digestible by the additional members of your team that are just coming online, you're now forcing them to start from ground zero instead of being able to learn from, you know, everything that you've already learned and then have a step up. So I realized, you know, after doing that, and, and by the way, plenty of the people that joined the company did very well and were fine, regard, irregardless of my ridiculous leadership <laughs> tactics, <laughs> right? In spite of me. Um, and now I realized like, oh, that was such a, a little bit of a shame to waste you know, so much knowledge and not maybe put that in some sort of format where someone can digest it and then grow and hit the ground running. So um, I think it's smart. Yeah, I'll let you know how it goes. I'm not, yeah. <laughs> I'm not convinced that this is gonna work just yet, <laughs> but, um, but uh, it'll be a start and uh, we'll have some dialogue and I'll get some feedback from my team, I'm sure. Can we please get a, a photo, joking of course, of that napkin? I want to use it as like one of the, I'm like, look, you don't have any excuses. Matt Murphy <laughs> put his customer life cycle on a napkin. <laughs> exactly. This is the number one reason I need koala right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the team then. You mentioned your poise to grow. Um, I've had a few conversations lately with leaders, customer success leaders that are just starting to hire their second, third, you know, team member, um, first, second, third team member. And there's this, everyone's very excited. Uh, and there's a lot of opportunity. I know there, you're on the team, you have a, a member additional, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting her name. Ashima. Yep. Ashima. In Ashima. India. Yeah. Um, who works, uh, alongside you. So what, what is, what does the team look like in, in the future? Um, what are, you mentioned, uh, I think growth was one of the metrics you're working towards. Um, so how are you hoping to grow the team? Yeah. So, um, I think the first answer is, I don't know to be, to mm -hmm. be totally honest. And, but what we're doing to figure that out is one, put that structure in place because my, I shared this with you before too, is I really wanna, uh, I don't wanna hire someone just because I feel overwhelmed or what have you. Um, I wanna know when it is that we need to bring on more talent. Um, and I don't know if there's a right answer to that, but at least have some sort of directional that says, um, yep, you're underwater, or don't even get to the point when you're underwater, you likely will be in a couple months, so why don't you bring someone on and give them some runway? Um, so, uh, the uh, and the other thing I'm doing is um, going back to um, Babson and, and, and pulling a student in from there whose uh, summer internship fell through uh, because of the COVID stuff, and yeah. having her help us kind of um, develop a strategy for what would it look like uh, to grow this team. And um, so I think it's a bit TBD. Um, yep. I foresee us always being a bit lean though. Um, mm. And mm -hmm. and really, uh, yeah, kind of having um, athletes, if you will. It's probably yep. an overused term, but someone who's yep. you know, not just answering customer service queries that come through on our chat. Um, you know, you, you'll do that, but you're also going to be um, testing experiences, building experiences on the platform and, and doing a lot of components that, that make up the customer success uh, relationship. Yeah. I think that's smart. Uh, you know, we all, we all know this. I'm not stating anything new, but throwing more people at the problem does not always solve the problem. So I think as you answer the question, I don't know, that's very powerful because you could sort of default and say, well, you know, the, co the company is growing. So I intend to hire two to three more people on the team based on uh, wanting to keep the level of service the same. And, but that could be in this case, a little bit of a, a, of a cop out because um, there are so many other factors that you want to consider that you're personally considering. And I think it's cool that you're bringing in talent from Babson. Um, I'm sure this is going to be an amazing experience for her. And then you guys get to learn from how she thinks about problems. She gets to learn from you. Because I know you have like a black belt in lean management. I think I saw on your <laughs> LinkedIn that this is not your first rodeo. <laughs> it's true. I, that was that was my former life. And yeah, that, that operational side will always creep in. Um, yeah. 
but yeah, a uh, little out of practice, but still. <laughs> it's like riding a bike. Just get back Yeah, on. a little bit of water, it'll grow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, no, I, I think that's great. And thank you for answering so honestly, because there are so many different things to consider as you decide to grow the team. It, it reminds me, so um, I had mentioned a few times or might include in the show notes that we have our humans of customer success community. You talked about the community earlier on the um, call. Thank you so much. Um, there was a pretty long thread, I want to say a week and a half ago around hiring and um, what's like what levers people look for or look to pull when they're hiring additional members of their team. And most of them were small teams just starting out. But you're not starting out, but you know, just the poise to scale. Um, so that might, I would just offer that up because they probably, you know, have much more expertise to share than I do. And I found it fascinating seeing all the different, I already thought it was complicated and there's so many levers. Um, it was really interesting to see how everyone thinks through how and when to hire, um, because we have people, we have processes and we have tools or sort of the three areas we all look at when we decide how do we want to continue to support our customers and what does that look like at scale? Um, but I, this, this was such a fun conversation. <laughs> I know so I had much. a, I had a blast and I, and I, um, I, I should say too, like that, um, the, the, the board is, is, is one of the places I absolutely will go, um, to, to do like a sanity check, right. You know, and say like, Hey, um, and it's so cool. Like, so, um, so I joined two weeks ago. Right. And it's like, mm -hmm. um, it's just cool to know that people are out there so willing and open to, to help others in our space out because I do think it's it's a fairly um, like unchartered uh, land. I mean, I think it, yeah. it, yes and no, I think we, we know how to service customers, but there's so much more that can be done and, and the work that you're doing um, is is a, a huge step forward and we we hope to i've already learned a lot from you in terms of what are the things we should be thinking about what are the things we should be looking to measure um and deliver on so um you can you know you'll hear from me when i'm having my <laughs> my struggles about i don't know if i should hire someone yet yeah. I, I i love all of it um and i learned so much from you too and that's what it's about right every day is a school day yeah, um, for sure. So if people want to find you uh, and connect with you, what are the best ways for them to do that? Yeah, so um, LinkedIn is is probably one of the best. Uh, and um, Matt Murphy, um, but you should add adaption to that because there's, you know, like I live in South Boston. There's probably six Matt Murphys on this block. So um, <laughs> look at adaption uh, as well. You'll find me because we're a pretty small team. Um, and then you can also find me on Twitter at Murph Boston, at Murph Boston. Nice, nice. I, I'll link those up in the show notes too. Um, cool. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing about your leadership philosophy, um, about sort of how you bring your personal into the professional and how you think about growing the team. I loved hearing the story about how you met Carl. And, and I mean, it definitely reminds us all, right? You get to make your dream job up if you just keep your eyes open, you know, so you guys had a great relationship and then you'd offered up some help and then it turned into opportunity and then it grew into client success. And along the way, you just showed up, right? You, you suit up, you show up and you do, you do some hard work and then it turns into this opportunity, which you're clearly thriving at. Um, and I, I, I loved, loved, loved hearing about it. So thank you. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, I always love getting a chance to, to talk to you. And thanks for um, bearing with me through our construction yeah. on, on our street here. Um, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't completely ruin the interview, but we'll just have to do it again if it did. Yeah. 100% part two, Matt Murphy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Sansi.